What if your body was a gift and contribution to your life and not something that you've been stuck with? What if your body could change quickly and easily? Right Body for You will inspire you and show you a different way of creating the body and the life you truly desire. Now here's your host, Danielle. And welcome back to Right Body for You. This is your host, Danielle. Um, you know, thank you so much for joining me today, whether it's today or in the future or in the past. You know, hey, if time isn't real, who says we're not joining together in the past? Um, I, I'm so grateful for all of you who take the time and listen to the shows and give me feedback. You know, I love hearing from you guys. Drop me a line, Danielle at accessconsciousness.com, D-O-N-N-I-E-L-L-E, and let me know. Uh, oh, hey, I had this awareness, or hey, I had this question, or what the freak are you talking about? Um, or, hey, I would love to know more about this topic. So please, 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 please feel free to drop me a line. I love hearing from you guys. Um, yes, I'm very good at energetically picking things out of people's heads and, you know, going with the energy and that kind of stuff. And I'm a wordsmith. I'm a writer. I like to talk to people as evidenced by the fact that I do a weekly radio show. Hello. <laughs> I do like that interaction, so please, 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 please drop me a line. Let me know how you're doing, okay? Today we're talking about world events and your body. You know, this is <laughs> one thing that travel has actually given me. You know, I'm Right Body for You is a division of Access Consciousness, right? Right Body for You is a book. Right Body for You is a workshop. Right Body for You, trust me, is an entity all to itself that has a very quirky and cheeky personality um, as it talks to me throughout uh, throughout my life um, and because uh, I also get to coordinate it, right, besides being the uh, poster child or, you know, cover the book and get to do the radio show and the workshops. Um, I also get to coordinate it and trust me, it is a cheeky personality. Well, of course. Have you ever listened to your body? Bodies can be funny things. And I don't mean like, haha, funny looking, funny, bah, um, but just a fun, unique personality. And, and that earth, oh my gosh, have you guys ever had a conversation with the earth? Yes, sometimes it could be noble. Sometimes it could be freaking hilarious. Um, you know, when I was, uh, when I was growing up in the Mormon community, I used to get in a little bit of trouble um, because I always said that God laughed or God had a sense of humor. And people are like, what? I'm like, what? You think God doesn't laugh at some of these things? It's freaking hilarious. Are you kidding me? Um, so trust me, Right Body for You is cheeky. It is very interesting. Um, but Right Body for You is a division of access consciousness that uses tools on the energetic level to help you change anything. Thing that you desire more in. You know, I used to say access consciousness tools to help you change any area of your life that's not working for you. And I went, you know what? Piss on that. Just by that definition, I'm meaning, I'm telling you guys that something has to be wrong for you to choose something different. You know what? And I apologize for that. I'm over that. You can just choose to have more. You know, one of my favorite things is it doesn't, something doesn't have to be wrong for you to make a choice. Something doesn't have to be uh, in the negative for you to add to it. So you can choose for any area of your life. Okay. And these are what the potency of access consciousness tools. I mean, yes, if there's something in your life that you're like, I don't like how that's going. Great. I have a tool for that. And if you know what, this is fantastic. Could it, does it get any better than this? Yes. I have a tool for that too. Welcome to the world of Right Body for You and Access Consciousness, where we have a fun time and we look at things a little bit differently, which I am so grateful for. And for me, one of the things that really helped me look at the world differently was traveling. Um, with Access Consciousness, I have seen places and gone to places that I had only dreamed of or I didn't know it was a country. Like, I went to Slovenia a couple of years ago. Um, Slovenia? 
I had no idea Slovenia was a country. And, you know, it's so much fun. Whenever I get registrations for, you know, the telesummits or the, uh, what is it, Tele teleseries, sorry, the things you do on the phone, uh, the teleseries or workshops or things that I do, um, when I get registrations for these, I see things for some countries that I'm like, I didn't even know that was a country. And it is really interesting um, to have this more global perspective. You know, when I first started working and taking access consciousness classes, um, oh, in August, no, sorry, uh, August, um, March of 2008, apparently when I look at the word 2000, the Numbers 2008 August comes out, which is interesting. I know eighth is the August is eighth month of the year, and there we go. Welcome to my head, <laughs> scary place, isn't it? Anyways, so when I first started taking classes in March of 2008, um, I had a passport and I had no stamps in it. I had, um, uh. I had some fantasy about going somewhere and it wasn't even like a specific somewhere. It was just something like, I know I need a passport. It was one of those moments where you have an awareness before the circumstances about what the awareness about is actually created in your life. Um, that's one of those things. I got a passport before I knew I needed it. Um, and anyways, what's exciting is, you know, passports are good for like 10 years or something like that. And so basically in the space of, Five years, I filled my passport, okay? I had to get a new one, not because it was expiring, but because it was full. And, you know, places like India require two blank pages for them to put a visa in and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't have the two blank pages. And I love that. I was so excited that I was full. <laughs> my passport was full. I had to get a new one. It was fantastic. But one thing that has really helped me is to have a more global perspective. So with things like world events in your body, it really helped me get a new, unique way of looking at things. And I'm so super grateful for it. Now, are you an infinite being? Yes. Okay. You are, you have been, you will be, no matter what that looks like. So I'm not saying you have to have an experience just like mine to be able to create that uh, global perspective, that global awareness of things. Um, you know, kind of like uh, if you ever – I did a really good show. Honestly, I'm sorry. I can't tell you when. I think it was in 2015 of um, – or it might have been 2000, early part of 2016. I'm sorry. Do a search for it. Um, about – you don't have to heal others or sorry, healing others without destroying yourself. And part of this is somewhere we have bought the point of view that we have to experience it to be able to learn from it, to glean from it, to um, know how to change it or to know how to help somebody else, which is, you know, a lot of people with, will take, try to take other people's diseases into their body all on the subconscious level, right? Take other, take diseases into their body so that they can, um, know what is required to heal it. Okay. So this is the same, same scenario taken with this. It's like you can have a global perspective without having to go to all these different countries. I haven't been to every country yet. <laughs> yet. Ha ha ha. I like that. Um, I haven't been to every country yet. And yet I have so much an awareness of, all the countries in the world, okay? And so this is what I'm saying. So I don't want you to judge yourself. I don't want yourself to be a bully to yourself. Like, well, I haven't been anywhere, so I can't have a global perspective. All I know is this little town that I live in. Cool. Do you know some of the best writers never traveled? I think it was, I forget, I'm sorry, Emily Post or Jane Austen? I forget which one, I'm sorry. One of them lived as a recluse, and yet she had this awareness and perspective of the world, and she created these books that were just phenomenal and in-depth and just uh, really spoke to the spirit of people and the world and everything in between. 
and the universe, right? The mysteries of everything. So this is not about getting you to go, you have to leave your front door, which, hey, you know what? I suggest that too. But it's not that you have to leave your town or anything like that to get a global perspective. And uh, so get the energy from me. You know how I always talk about copying an energetic feel? This is one of those times. It's like you are an infinite being. You have been, you are, and you will be. What if you don't have to experience it this time to be able to know what's going on? Because as an infinite being, you've experienced and done and been and said everything before. So what if you could just recall those? Okay. Why do I keep going on about this when I'm talking about world events and your body? You know, what the freak? Because I'm asking you to get a broader awareness, a full awareness, a infinite awareness, a out there aware of everything um, with the world. Why? Because it affects your body, really, truly. It, it does. It affects your body. Um, you know, when I was writing up the description for this, I go, I. this is what I have. I have this, There's a war in Africa, but you don't live there. What does that have to do with your body? Right? I don't live in Africa. Doesn't matter if they're having a war. Yeah, actually it does. There's a bombing at the Atlanta Olympics. Do you guys remember that? Anybody? Years, years, years ago. I hardly remember it. What does that have to do with your body? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. There is an earthquake in Chile. What does that have to do with your body? Okay. And here's the thing that's interesting. A lot of people with the earthquakes or storms or avalanches or anything like that, when it has to do with the earth, with the earth shifting and changing, with the rise of the ocean or the tide, or sorry, the the tectonic plates shifting, um, things like that, you guys are so much more willing to admit and acknowledge that it affects your body. Because you're like, well, yeah, you know, our bodies are come from the earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Our bodies are of the earth, so of course, you know, uh, I'm willing to suspend my disbelief for the hour of this radio show and uh, listen to you talking about that for a moment of like, yeah, of course, you know, the, um, the, uh, I get angry and there's an earthquake. I get agitated, there's an earthquake. Or, you know, I, I, like for me the other day, you know, I was in my office and I'm like, storm coming because my body started getting all tingly and it was exciting. And so I went out on my porch and I'm like, where's the storm? And then this huge, amazing storm started rolling in. Um, it had lightning, gorgeous. It was a front row view to this gorgeous storm, lightning and the thunder rolling in and um and it, it's talking about awareness. It was kind of funny because I was like, um, I wonder if that would be, because the lightning strikes looked really close. And I'm like, I wonder if that would be even closer. I wonder if it would like be near where my sister lives and like, you know, where I used to live. And, you know, wonder if it would be like, boo, scary, ha, 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 you know, and not from like the mean way, but just from like the adventure of it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I wonder if that's actually hitting the ground. I wonder if, I wonder if any fires are going or anything. And as soon as I said, I wonder how if fires or anything, um, I it hit one of the mountains in the distance, and I saw a little flame spark up. Which for me to see a little flame spark up meant it was a big fire. And then a little bit later, I heard the helicopters or the planes and everything, you know, going to put it out. Um, and then I texted my sister, and I'm like, so how are you guys doing down there having fun with the storm? You're not getting hit with lightning. Are you? And she's like, Oh my gosh, it's amazing. The last, the last lightning strike was just two blocks away from us. And so it's like, you know, my body was letting me know I was literally in my office and I was like, storm's coming. Yay. <laughs> you know, I got all tingly. So I went outside to watch and then I was actually communicating with my body was communicating with the storm. And it's like, we're more willing to, um, admit that our body has this connection with the earth because it's this, it's 
similar molecules and in all that kind of stuff and consciousness of the earth, consciousness of our bodies. But what about those wars? What about those bombings? Do those also affect our bodies? You better believe it. Okay. We're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about this, how a war in Africa or a bombing out at the Olympics um, affect and impact your body. Okay. This is Right Body for You. I'm Danielle. <laughs> we're on a to Z FM, and we'll be right back. What if your body could be an ease and not a burden? What would life be like if you could enjoy your body? What if changing your body was easier than we've been taught? And what if it's not about the latest fad? Join Danielle each week on Right Body for You as she explores what bodies are and the ease of change that's possible. Each week you will receive inspirational stories of those who've used the Right Body for You energetic tools to change their body and the tools that they used, tools that you can begin to use immediately. Listen for Right Body for You every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on a to Zen.fm. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. Thirteen years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question. Always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. Beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com This is Right Body for You with Danielle. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255 or Canada 613-800-8763. Or UK, 4433-0001-0625. You can Skype us at a to zen.fm. Or if you'd like to email a question, please send it to danielle at accessconsciousness.com. Now, back to the program. And welcome back to Right Body for You. I am your host, Danielle. Um, welcome to a different radio show with a different host. Trust me. We're different types in the world out there, and I am so grateful for it every day. Okay, so today we're talking about world events and your body. Does it one have anything to do with the other? Does one impact the other? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, end of show. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Before the break, we were talking about how... Um, Quite a few people are willing to spend this belief of like, oh, well, yeah, you know, I got agitated and ornery. There's an earthquake happening. Um, you know, some of you may have heard me tell the story about um, when I was being a petulant little child and ornery and resistant and like eh, pouty and just irritated um, at a seven day event in Costa Rica and it turns out that there was, I didn't ask a question, silly me, I'm not always, you know, I'm not always the eloquent, bright person, <laughs> um, but I, I didn't ask a question, and then we ended up having an earthquake in um, Costa Rica, which was where we were, which I always thought it was interesting. Um, so we're willing, we're more often willing to look at that and acknowledge that, um, that, that is going on. Okay. So what happens when it's on the earth and not through the earth? And what I mean by that is those wars, those bombings and things like that. Does that actually affect our body? You know what? Yeah, you better believe it. Which is one of the reasons I was asking you to have that global perspective of um, that, you know, from the first segment. And it doesn't mean you have to go traveling, but just be aware of the world around you um, and to see what's going on. And 
let me let me say I, I'm not asking you to read all the newspapers and watch all the news stories and do whatever you do. what works for you. But be willing to have because I don't. <laughs> I have to tell you guys this little side note funny. Um, you know, this weekend or I think it's this weekend. I can't remember. Um, July 15th through the 18th, I'll be back in Seattle doing a Right Body for You workshop. Hope you can join me. We're going to have a lot of fun. And the last time I was in Seattle, I was doing, I was attending a class and I got to meet with, um, an old friend of mine who does, who, who I worked in TV with. Okay. We were co-producers. And what was funny is she asked me, she goes, do you watch the news anymore? I'm like, no, I don't watch the news anymore. Um, you know, and some people are like, I don't watch the news because it's depressing and blah, blah, blah. And yes, you know, depressing and stuff like that. And I don't watch the news because I critique it. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. If you guys, if it's a, if you ever have a chance to watch the news with me and ask me to do like the verbal what's going on, it's pretty dang funny. Uh, my family won't actually watch programs like that with me anymore, live programs, because I'm always calling out on the things like, oh, they took that late, or look, that's misspelled, or look, whoops, that was a mistake, oh, they should have done this, or whatever, or wrong camera, hello, over here, and um, so this is why I don't watch news. <laughs> um, so this is what, <laughs> exactly. The uh, producer in the chat room, she's like, an, she's a perpetual spelling grammar editor. Amen to that. Um, so it is, it is, so this is what I'm saying. You don't have to watch the news because I know it really depresses some people, but don't be, um, what's the word? Don't be, don't have your head stuck in the sand so you're not actually aware of the world around you. Okay. Because yes, it affects your body. How does it affect your body? in so many ways okay first off let's talk about um the ripples okay uh when a major thing is going on when war is going on energetically our bodies are aware of other people's thoughts feelings and emotions okay they're aware of other people's bodies. They're aware of other people's illnesses, happy times, okay? Let me say this right now. Bodies are not just aware of the bad things. <laughs> They're also aware of the happy things or when people are are feeling good, feeling bad or feeling good. For the body, it's just a total interesting point of view of what's going on for that other body, Okay. So let's take something like the bombings of the Twin Towers in New York. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but a number of years ago, um, there was a major uh, terrorist attack and in the United States. And uh, two planes were flown into the what used to be the Twin Towers in New York, these really tall structures um, that had, you know, a ton of people working in it and stuff and you know one plane into the um pentagon and another plane was grounded um that because the passengers fought back and they uh took it to the ground so so these these four planes were overthrown by these terrorists and so it was kind of the ripple that heard throughout the world a lot of people heard about this the twin bomb or um the planes going into the twin towers okay so what's interesting with that is let's look at how it actually affects our bodies then and now. Okay, so first off, thought, feelings, and and emotions. Okay. Have you guys, okay, I'm admitting I'm a complete geek. Here we go. In Star Wars, (laughs) yes, Star Wars, I'm a complete geek, right? Um, in Star Wars, if you guys have ever seen it, if you haven't seen it, there's this Jedi Master who is really, you know, he's he's down with the Force, man. You know, he he can he can foresee, receive things, and you know, I kind of like uh, <laughs> I kind of like this. You know, we're all kind of that Jedi thing of being aware of the universe around you and the energy, you know, and that is 
it's kind of the same thing with the Force, man, you know, and the with these Jedi's. So he says, Obi Wan Kenobi. He's like, he's training young young Skywalker, and they're doing this sword thing and and lightsaber. Sorry, guys, lightsaber. I just heard a lot of people go sword lightsaber. Sorry. Um, the strengthening his muscle of awareness of the Force, right? So anyway, so Obi Wan sits there, and all of a sudden, and he goes, oh, and he kind of like his body weaves, and he has to sit down and. You know, Luke's like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? And um, Obi-Wan goes, oh, it, it was all of a sudden, it was like a thousand voices cried out. And then were sudden cried out, and, you know, like anger, fear. And then and then suddenly they were silenced. And so it's like, you know, this is a movie. But but how often is that kind of stuff actually true? You know, with something like the, the Twin Towers and our bodies are so, so aware of people's thoughts, feelings, emotions, as well as the infinite being massively aware of thought, feelings, and emotions. Um, but how many, when those, when this attack was occurring, how many of us actually had that awareness of all those people screaming out and then suddenly silenced? Okay. I remember that morning. I remember uh, I worked at a TV station then. I didn't have a news. I wasn't at a new, uh, TV station with news. And I was on my way into work. And I remember waking up that morning. Now, I was two hours. I was in mountain time. I was in Utah. And this happened in New York. So it was two hours ahead of me. And just mean like they started their day two hours earlier than me, right? And so I remember waking up and not feeling right. I just kind of felt wrong. You know, my body felt awkward, felt like I kind of, you know, it's like, eh, everything is uncomfortable today. And, you know, I was living with my boyfriend. He's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. It's just weird. The world's weird today. I don't know what's going on. I just, and when I meant the world, I meant just mine. Right? I didn't mean the global world. I had no idea yet. I had turned on a radio, but I felt all icky. And I'm like, ugh, I just don't uh, I don't know. I'm just, I don't, just shut up, go away. You annoy me. Which, by the way, it was also like, it was towards the end of our relationship, also. So of course, those feelings, what I was becoming aware of, I was just shoving off to. Well, of course, it must just be you. You're annoying me. Go away. Um, but it, I, it was so much more than that, you know. And I, so I get dressed and I get in on my way to work and I remember listening to the radio and um these shock jocks you know these 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 this radio station that I was listening to occasionally they're very irreverent with their comedy so they're sitting there and they're talking about uh the plane going into the first tower cuz the second tower hadn't happened yet the first, the plane going into the first tower and everything, and I'm like, wow, you guys are really crossing the. I thought it was a joke. You guys are really crossing the line here. That's just crap. I can't believe you're making a joke about this. And then it took me a little while to realize that it wasn't a joke and that this was what was going on. I wish I had the tools then to be able to realize that all of that, that uncomfortableness and that, um, that's unease and that anxiety I was actually feeling was not mine, that I was actually perceiving the thought, feelings, and emotions of the people in New York and around the world. Because trust me, when the world is focused on an event like this, things, the vibration of it ramps up so dynamically that even the most person who's trying to dampen their awareness the most tend to perceive something, Okay. Um, so I wish I had then the tool of who does it belong to because, man, I could have used it that day because I was so uh, anxious. And how ma- look at the people who were um, in New York. You know, I have a friend who lives in New York, and to tell her, have her tell the story of that day is incredible. And so how many people were – and here's the thing with the towers. It didn't officially – it didn't fall automatically – so there were so many people in the towers still trying to leave. They were anxious. They were scared. They were upset. 
how was I feeling? Upset, anxious, unsure, not knowing what was going on. I wasn't necessarily scared, but I had that, I don't know, something's just off. What is wrong? Uh Right? Because that's how I was interpreting it. My body was giving me the awareness of what was going on for all of these people. So it was really incredible to look back now and to see, you know, what was going on with that, with the thought, feelings, and emotions. Okay? All right. We're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, we're going to talk about their bodies and our bodies and what's going on with that. Okay? All right. This is Right Body for You with your host, Danielle. <laughs> we're on adazen.fm, and we'll be right back. What if your body could be an ease and not a burden? What would life be like if you could enjoy your body? What if changing your body was easier than we've been taught? And what if it's not about the latest fad? Join Danielle each week on Right Body for You as she explores what bodies are and the ease of change that's possible. Each week you will receive inspirational stories of those who've used the Right Body for You energetic tools to change their body and the tools that they used, tools that you can begin to use immediately. Listen for Right Body for You every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on a Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is Right Body for You with Danielle. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255 or Canada 613-800-8763 or U.K. 4433-0001-0625. You can Skype us at atizen.fm. Or if you'd like to email a question, please send it to danielle at accessconsciousness.com. Now, back to the program. And welcome back to Right Body for You. I am your host, Danielle. And today we're talking about world events and your body. Um, and I need to clarify for all my fellow geeks out there. Um, you know, I could hear a couple people's heads when I was talking about um, the the scene in Star Wars where uh, Obi-Wan feels the, all the voices scream out and then be silent. For those of you who haven't actually seen the movie, what it was was a planet was destroyed. I mean, literally, the the bad guys came in and they sent a beam into the planet and it went, boom, exploded. And so, and that's what Obi Wan was perceiving was that all of those uh, millions of voices went ah, and then poof, silence because well, they were gone. Um, and so, this is the clarification, which is why I use that example. Um, and so today we're actually talking, yes, see the movie, people, <laughs> see the movie. <laughs> There's actually six of seven of them because another one just recently came out. I'm a big Star Wars fan. <clears throat> um, and what was interesting is, uh, so we're talking about the World Trade Center, you know, bombing or the planes flying into the Twin Towers as an example of how world events that we might not be there physically and how it actually affects us and our bodies, which is why I'm inviting you to have a global perspective. And what I mean by global perspective is you don't have to know what every country a war is going on in or things like that, because by the way, there's a lot of them. I did. I did. When I was looking at this show, I went countries that wars are currently occurring in just, you know, internet search, right? See what comes up a lot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about. You don't have to actually cognitively know of everything, but just um, 
be aware that there is a world out there. Okay. Um, okay. So in the first, in the, well, in the last break or last section segment, there we go. There's the word. In the last segment, we talked about how the fo- thoughts, feelings, and emotions of the people who were involved, not just in the Twin Towers, but those in New York and those around the world um, and how it was affecting us and our bodies. Because we have this awareness of the thought, feelings, and emotions. And I was uncomfortable. I was anxious. You know, for me that morning, I was uncomfortable. I was anxious. And I know a lot of you are thinking back to what you were doing on that day. Absolutely. Um, and here's also, sorry, a very random one that that just I just recalled. I remember another morning waking up being really sad. And it was just one of those days where it's like, I'm just blue today. I don't know what's going on. I'm just blue. And uh, when I get to work, I find out, this is way before I worked in TV. Um, when I got to work, I found out that Princess Diana had died. And, you know, I... England was a country that I desired to go to at some point in the time. Princess Diana was this princess out there. I didn't really have much of a connection with her, but I actually recall waking up sad and depressed just for the day and not having any idea why, but how much of England was mourning. Princess Diana at that point was their favorite uh, royalty, right? And so how much was I picking up on the mourning and the sadness of an entire country and a lot of the world? Because, you know, a lot of people had an emotional connection with her. Okay. So it's not just the, you know, the, the, uh, the bombings and things like that. You, you become aware of a lot of things in a global perspective. Okay. And so, okay. So back to, back to the Twin Towers. Back to the cheery subject of the the planes flying into the Twin Towers. Um, okay, so we talked about the thought, feelings, and emotions and those coming in. Okay, what about the bodies? Wow. All right. Um, there were the gamut of things in this attack. Um, there were people with uh, breathed particles of building and things like that into their lungs smoke they had those problems um people were from minor cuts and abrasions to massive contusions and trapped under walls and and death i mean as far as the affecting the bodies the attack run the gamut of it as does you know most attacks and so what's interesting is this is, again, where the tool, who does this belong to, really comes in. Because remember, 98% of your thought, feelings, and emotions don't belong to you. But you know what? 50 to 100% of what goes on for your body also does not belong to you. Um, I know some people who had problems breathing that day. Um, they're in Utah. Why do they have problems breathing today? Because their bodies are talking to their other people's bodies over there. Because our bodies... Yes, they give us the thought, feelings, and emotions of what's going on, the energy of what's going on for other people, but it also gives us the um, physicalness of what's going on for other bodies, okay? So there's many layers to this. It's the people, infinite beings, it's the bodies. And so you also have awarenesses. Your body is giving you awareness of what is going on for their bodies, um, which was part of, for me, some of the uncomfortableness, like... Um, my skin didn't quite fit. Um, yeah, we can talk entities and all that kind of stuff, but really just at the base level, it's like how much information was my body giving me about the bodies that were going on in New York and all of that information was actually making my body uncomfortable and my awareness of it. I mean, uh, uncomfortable, you know, it's like I would love, I don't desire a tragedy like that to happen, And I would have loved to have had these tools then because I would be curious to see what my reaction would be. And what I mean by reaction is, you know, I spent that entire day going, I'm just uncomfortable. I'm just, uh," you know, uh, I I don't feel right. So I'm wondering if I had that tool of who does this belong to and return to sender, what it could have maybe created more ease for me in my body that day. 
because your body is talking to bodies. I don't care if it's never met the bodies. I don't care if it's never touched these bodies. I don't care if these bodies are on the other side of the world. You know what? They have an awareness of what's going on for it, which is why I say 50 to 100% of what shows up in your body doesn't actually belong to you. Okay. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you stub your toe and your toe's bleeding. It belongs to you. I use that as a joke because I had somebody in a class in Italy one time tell me that. They're like, um, my toe's bleeding. Who's that belong to? I'm like, you, you want a Band-Aid? You know, I mean, it's like, you know, 50 to 100% of what goes on for your body does not belong to you. So when this thing, so, so many bodies, besides the infinite being, during events like this, bodies are also screaming. Bodies are also going, ow, you know what, that hurts. <laughs> That's an intensity. That doesn't feel right. You know, and it's like, um, you know, sometimes with pain, it's sometimes when you have a pain in your body, it's an awareness of it's an awareness you're not willing to receive. Sometimes when you have pain in your body, um, it's an awareness or it's 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 a number of things. OK, you can't just write it off as one. And with this. The pains in these people's bodies, oh, it could be because your leg is underneath uh, a wall. Yes, that pain, that is your your nerves signaling things going on. And so when you're having world events like this, your body is actually giving you sometimes the information of other people's pain. And it's just like, oh, well, their pain is an awareness that they're not willing to have. I'm pretty sure they're aware of the wall on their leg, right? And so as we're... As, as the world continues to spin and things go on, our body becomes aware of other people's bodies and things that are going on for it. Um, so, yes, if you're not the one who has a wall on your leg and you're feeling a pain in your leg, this is the beauty of who does it belong to? And you're not necessarily going to go, oh, you know what, somewhere somebody has a wall on their leg. Um, but you do become aware of of uh, what is going on for them. Okay, so when world events go on like this, yes, thought, feelings, and emotions, but also the physicalness of their body. Um, it's not just the infinite beings that you hear screaming, holy crap, a wall's coming down. You also hear the bodies going, holy crap, there's a wall on me. <laughs> you know, so you you receive all of this information and your body is giving it to you. Your body is a source of awareness, source of information. It's it's a um it is constantly giving you information for everything that's going on for you. It's a sensory organism, okay? It is constantly giving you information, not just for you, but for everything. Okay? Um, and so this is what I'm saying, world events, whether you're there or not, whether you're even aware of them or not, can affect your body because your body is giving you whether thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and your body is telling you also about what's physically going on for their bodies, okay? Um, have you ever woke up and felt like your head exploded? Um, well, maybe you're aware of somebody's head that did actually explode. Gross, sorry, but really, you know, when you start to become aware of these things and not from the, like, oh, my God, that's horrible. It should never be done. Yes, there is always that. But just from the awareness of, like, oh, this is what's going on. It's not mine. Okay. We're going to take our last <laughs> somebody in the chat room graphic much. Yep. Sorry. Um, we've all been there. You know, just saying. Just calling it out. Um, so we're going to take our last little break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about who does this belong to and another tool um, that I would like to give you that can actually contribute to creating ease for you and your body in this in situations like this. Okay, this is Right Body for You with your host. Don't yell, that's me. And we're on a to Zen FM, and we'll be right back. What if your body could be an ease and not a burden? What would life be like if you could enjoy your body? What if changing your body was easier than we've been taught? And what if it's not about the latest fad? Join Danielle each week on Right Body For You as she explores what bodies are and the ease of change that's possible. 
Each week you will receive inspirational stories of those who've used the right body for you, energetic tools to change their body and the tools that they used, tools that you can begin to use immediately. Listen for Right Body for You every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. Check out the new ringtones from Access Consciousness. What is it possible? What is it possible? Smoking hot. Smoking hot. <laughs> and everyone's favorite. Take a pass. Take a pass. Download the latest and hottest accessory. Go to accessconsciousness.com forward slash ringtones for all the details on how to download to your iPhone today. This is Right Body for You with Danielle. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255 or Canada 613-800-8763 or U.K. 4433-0001-0625. You can Skype us at a to zen.fm. Or if you'd like to email a question, please send it to Danielle at accessconsciousness.com. Now, back to the program. And welcome back to Right Body Review. I'm your host, Danielle. Today we're talking about world events and your body. And, you know, we've been kind of reliving some of the World Trade Center planes flying into the Twin Towers thing. And, um, and you know, and a couple of interesting things with this. It's like, how many of us can go back right to that and know and perceive what we were feeling or being that day? And this is, again, why, who does this belong to? Because, just because you're feeling it again still doesn't mean it belongs to you, okay? Um, and somebody in the chat room just had a great um, a great awareness with it all. She's like, I'm just now getting that in addition to the silence due to no planes flying, because they grounded everything, right? It was like they didn't know where in the world any of this was going to go on, so it's like everything stopped. Um, the people around the world were in such shock. They didn't know what to think or say. There was a void in the mental field that I'm always hearing slash picking up on. Very cool awareness, which it is. It's very cool awareness Um, because she was talking earlier about the stillness afterwards because it's like, you know, after that, the word went out after all the, um, you know, the calm right after there was, there was the silence of like, what? And she said it well with shock of like, huh. And how does that affect our bodies, too? So it's not just during the event. It is a continual thing. It's really interesting. And should you ever go and visit any of those places, like if you ever go to, like, the in New York or the, the One World Tower, I think it's now, where they have a monument to the whole thing, um, it, it, the energy there is quite palpable. And people, it's interesting to walk around there um, because people are just vibrating off each other, the stories and, um, yes, we can talk entities and... <laughs> that are still hanging around there. But the um, people's stories or experiences of that day are vibrating off each other. And this is, um, oh, cool. The, and the Rana said the Pentagon monument is extremely still, which is very interesting. Um, so this is why I'm asking you to be aware of these global things, because you have this, when you have this global awareness and things are going on, um, you get to, acknowledge all of these amazing things that are going on um not the rightness of it not the wrongness of it but so that you can actually go who does this belong to because let me tell you who does this belong to one of the most potent tools that people refuse to use um who does this belong to in times like this can actually allow you to uh, have ease because i'm pretty sure that if i had the tools now that i had if i have the tools then that i have now um, all that anxiety and upset and feeling awkward in my body and in my life, I could have had ease with and been able to go, oh, not my return to sender, which actually leads me to the next tool. In these kind of circumstances, please don't judge like, oh, that was a bad thing. That was a good thing. That was a horrible thing or, you know, whatever it is, because you don't judge. You can have awareness of it of, like that was crappy, but don't have a judgment of it, which is an interesting thing an awareness and a judgment. Same words, different energy. Okay. Um, what can I contribute here? What energetic contribution can I be? Sometimes it is, you know, you go down and you do things, you go down to shelters and help out. Sometimes it's just an energetic contribution. 
And what's interesting is not judging and not going, oh my gosh, you poor thing, how horrible, and dumping that all onto the people. Not doing that is actually one of the greatest contributions you can be. Again, you can look at it and acknowledge that was crappy. That shouldn't happen. I am so sorry. That shouldn't have happened to you. Um, what can I do for you? Not, oh my gosh, you poor thing. Oh, you little, blah, 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 because you put all of that on them and they have a harder time getting out because they might not have the tool of who's it belong to. I'm like, stop dumping on me, right? So what can I contribute here? And sometimes it's just that contribution of awareness of energy. So it's like, who does this belong to? And what can I contribute here actually is able to create great ease for you and your body. And here we go, folks. If you're not doing it for you, do it for them. Because people who are, uh, these things are actually occurring with and you're becoming aware of them and their body, when you actually do, who does this belong to reach a certain turn to sender and what contribution can I be here? Not only are you creating ease for you, your life, your body, but also ease for them, their life, and their body, okay? And it could just be, you know, that awareness, that moment of breath of like, that you can be a contribution to. And trust me, if you've ever been in a circumstance like that, sometimes that is the greatest gift of just that moment of breath, okay? Um, all right, so... And remember also, when world events go on like this, the energy and the vibration of it tends to be so focused and so um, uh, fine-tuned that it raises to a level that even the most people who try to be unaware are aware of it, okay? So this is why I'm going on with this. It doesn't, a world events don't have to be just through the earth to affect your body, like earthquakes and hurricanes, but it can also be on the earth, bombings, terrorist attacks, um, <laughs> plants exploding, things like that. If something's going on in the world, wars. So please have a global perspective, be aware, and know that it affects your body, but there's tools. And the first tool is acknowledging that it's not yours. Because if it was never yours, you can't actually pod pocket. But what you can do is you can return it to sender. And what I mean by that is you are not returning the harmful thing. You're just returning consciousness and choice and contribution. Okay. Who does this belong to? Return to sender. And what contribution can I be here? Sometimes it's the contribution of no judgment. Sometimes it's the contribution of not solidifying it. And sometimes it's the contribution of it, your butt down to the shelter. Who knows? Um, but just be willing to be in that awareness and in that question. Okay. Um, so interesting show today. Um, hope you got some awarenesses. I know I did. It was so much fun for me. I love doing these shows just for the awarenesses that I receive as well. Um, so, and I hope you guys, July 15th through the 18th is right around the corner. I hope you join us in Seattle. We're going to have so much fun. I love doing these classes. It is just freaking fantastic. I have so much fun with these Right Body For You workshops. We change our lives, change our bodies, change the world, little things like that. Um, you know, and as we just were talking about, the world is a bigger place and smaller place than we've actually given it credit for. And please remember, the thing that's going on with your body might not actually belong to you, might belong to somebody in a war-torn country somewhere else. Um, so please do. Who does this belong to? Mind someone else, something else, a return to sender. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about the workshop on the 15th through the 18th, um, please, you can go to donnellecarter.accessconsciousness.com for details for times and to register. Please let me know you're coming because we have a manual for you that's a freaking fantastic manual. Okay. And if you guys have any subjects you'd like to know more about, please feel free to drop me a line, Danielle at accessconsciousness.com, D-O-N-N-I-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, um, at accessconsciousness.com. And remember, make it a fun week, make it a happy week, enjoy your body because it's enjoying you, and I hope to see you back next week here because I will be here, and I hope to see some of you down in Seattle at the Right But Few workshop. Thanks, everyone. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Right Body For You. 
Danielle will return next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. We hope you and your body will join us.